let's look in Proverbs chapter 27. I didn't want to try and cover all of this last week. Um, it has some good verses in chapter 27 about friends and friendship. Did everyone get the notes? There's, um, I think they're right there in front of you, John. Or do you, do you have them? Does anybody want the notes? That didn't get them. Get a couple here. Some great verses in the chapter, and then some other information that I wanted to, to give you tonight. Last week we looked at the, mainly the first few verses, and then some of the last verses, but we looked at praise and planning, important, two important parts of our life. Uh, verses 1 and 2, let me just read those by way of review. Proverbs 27, 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. Some wisdom from the Lord there about praise and planning. Tonight we're looking at friends and friendship, and I wanted to give you this, this information just to help you think about this. Uh, I thought about writing it on a board, and I thought, no, it would be easier if you have it in your hands there. Uh, levels of friendship. Uh, understanding these, this concept will help you in understanding how to use this as a ministry and not let it become a, a hindrance in your life. You know, there's, there's people, the, the first one is acquaintance. If you can spell acquaintance, that's good. Uh, acquaintance, that's a, a, an occasional contact. You know, that's somebody that you may not even know their name. Uh, maybe the, the grocer or, you know, somebody, you know them and they kind of know you, but, you know, you're not close friends. You're, it's just an acquaintance. A good thing to do with an acquaintance is to try and learn and remember their name. That will help you. That will help, help them. And when you have an opportunity, you may be able to get to witness to them. The second level is a casual friend. A casual friend is someone where you probably have a common interest or maybe a common activity. You see them because you both walk your dogs or, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe a common concern. Sometimes there's things that are going on, and so you're, you're thrown together on, on occasion. A casual friend. <laughs> The third one, this is more what we think of really as a friend. This is a close friend. That's a person where you have mutual life goals. Of course, you know their name. You know, you probably visit each other's homes or, or whatever. Maybe you go to school together. Uh, a close friend. And then the third is an intimate friend. An intimate friend. This is where you're really you're committed to each other's character. In life, you don't have very many of these, usually. Hopefully, if you're married, your husband or your wife is your intimate friend. <laughs> you're, you're good, you know, you should be friends. Um, the danger point is between two and three. It's between casual friend and close friend. Now, the reason I say that is because there's just a, there's a desire in our hearts many times just to be accepted. Gangs play on this. And... <laughs> You know, to be their friend, to be included with them, well, you've got to do this or you've got to do that. And, and there's a real danger in moving from casual to close friend, you know, in changing that relationship. Who's leading? You know, is, uh, is it a, a ministry or is it a problem? Um, sometimes parents, when they're having trouble with their child, you've heard this, maybe you've said this, They'll say, well, our, our son is, is fine, it's just his friends. What they don't know is the other parents are saying exactly the same thing. Our, our kids are fine, it's just, it's just their friends. You, you ever hear the old saying, birds of a feather flock together? <laughs> uh, you know something about a person by the friends they choose. You know something about your children by the friends that they, that they choose. Um, now, there's some extreme warnings in the Bible about this, some for Israel, some for uh, other groups, and, and some for us as, as New Testament believers. For instance, Exodus 34, and you know that there, God had some of these for Israel. Exodus 34, verse 12. Friendship is a wonderful thing, but some people, to earn a friend, will do some terrible things, and that's not real friendship. That's, that's the point, one of the points we want to get across tonight. 
Exodus 35, verse 12, God said to Israel, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. If you know about Israel, you know that as, they, as God sent them into the land, he said, Now, you're not to be a part of, of the wickedness that's there. That's why God was kicking them out. They, he'd given them hundreds of years to repent, and, and, and they hadn't. And anyway, God says, don't, don't make a friendship with them. In uh, Psalm 1, this is a, a familiar portion of Scripture. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know, God warns us. We need to be careful uh, of our friendships. We need to be careful of who is influencing us and how they're influencing us. Uh, Proverbs 4, uh, verse 14. There's quite a few in Proverbs, and I, I, I'm just giving you a, a sampling of these, but... I just want you to see that God really warns us about our associations. And uh, we would, maybe a general term for this would be our friendships. Proverbs 4, 14, he says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. He continues with that, that thought. Uh, the New Testament one in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, very familiar, I would think, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And he, 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 again, he continues with that thought. Now that has, that has a more specific application, uh, but I include it here just to show you that this pattern that God has in the Bible. He's concerned about our associations, uh, our friendships, and so on. And uh, those four levels, you know, as Christians, uh, we should be the most friendly people in the world. You know, we should be friendly to Muslims. We should be friendly to homosexuals. We should be friendly to ugly neighbors. And, you know, me, I shouldn't say ugly, mean neighbors. Um, you know, we should be friendly people. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we, we should have them as our close or intimate friends. Uh, you know, there's, there's a difference. And uh, we need to know, to know that difference. Who is influencing who? Who is leading who? In Proverbs 27 there, he has several really good verses about friendship. For instance, verses 5 and 6. Let's look at good friendships. This is one of our memory verses. This is O. <laughs> Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Now let me cover the negative first. You know, there's people who will compliment you just because they want something from you. Because they want to, actually, sometimes they want to hurt you. They want to use you. Uh, but a friend, a real friend, sometimes will tell you the truth even when they know they're risking their friendship or, or it might hurt you. Uh, a real friend, he talks about faithful are the wounds of a friend. A real friend will be truthful. Let me give you a New Testament example of this in Galatians chapter 2 with Paul and Peter. Some of you are aware of this already, but... Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. You know, you think of Paul, Peter, you know, they must have, they, of course, they never did anything wrong. Well, Galatians 2, 11, when Peter was come to Antioch, this is Paul talking, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, when the Jews were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. That's the Jewish people. And when the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, I'm sorry, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. When I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. And I won't read you the whole thing, but what he's saying here is Peter was being hypocritical. And he confronted him about it. He was a friend to him. And he didn't do it, I don't think he did it angrily or anything like that. And he did it openly. He did it with other people around. Uh, but he wanted, he wanted to be a friend to him and to help him to, to do what was right. 
You know, a real friend will be truthful. There's several verses that I, I would give you here. One is um, Galatians 4, verse 16. And he's talking to the church at Galatia, and he says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? <laughs> uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 15, this is a well-known verse on this. Ephesians 4 verse 15, But speaking the truth in love. That's the point I want, want you to hear there. Uh, this is not just getting angry with people. You know, sometimes we, we hold in, we hold in, then we, we burst. And the, you know, the, the dam bursts and, you know, everybody gets hurt. That's not the way God wants us to do it. You know, if we're going to be friends with somebody, we've got to be willing to love them and to uh, sometimes be the faithful one who will wound them. But let me make, an, make a note here. This is not all that a friend does. Okay. <laughs> Uh, our job as friend is not just go around wounding each other, all right? <laughs> That's not the only part of friendship. Uh, sometimes it, it is a, a part of it. In, in Proverbs 27, verse 9 and 10, he gives us another part of friendship. Ointment and perf perfume rejoice the heart. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. There's a couple of thoughts there. Uh, one is, as a friend, we're going to counsel. You know, we're going to give hearty counsel. Oh, you're about to, ooh, watch out, don't do that. You, know? <laughs> You've done, you did that. And you know the result that could happen or whatever. Hearty counsel or, yeah, you can, I can help you get started in this business or, you know, whatever. Yeah, there's all, all kinds of areas. Uh, a friend has good advice and is helpful. But also a friend consoles and helps there in verse 10. And what he's saying there is when you're in trouble, you should turn to your friends. You shouldn't, you know, call your relatives overseas or, you know, it's not just family that can help you. You need to be a friend and be, uh, allow your friends to be a friend to you. A friend helps, counsels and consoles and helps. Uh, Proverbs 17, verse 17, a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. You know, that's, that's part of, of friendship. So good, good friendship is truthful, helpful. Verse 14, a good friendship can also be annoying. He that blesseth his, his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. Now that's, that's mainly a note to the friend not to be so noisy, but, you know, as friends, let's be honest, sometimes our friends really annoy us, don't they? Yeah? I, I was a grown man before I realized that people liked me in spite of some of the things about me. <laughs> it wasn't that I was so wonderful that they liked me. Uh, you know, there was a friendship, and you take the good with the bad. And sometimes you're going to have a friend with a loud voice who's going to call you early in the morning. You can turn off your phone. You know, there's different ways to handle it. But uh, sometimes it's going to be annoying. Sometimes friendship is going to cost you. There's a lot of things we put up with because we love somebody. Someone said, I don't know where I heard this, we like because we love although. That, that speaks to me. We like because we love although. <laughs> and we need to realize that just like you put up with things from your friends, your friends put up with things from you. And that's, that's the value of, of, of friendship. Let, let me give you some quotes about friendship. I, I've got a lot of them. I like this one. I might give my life for my friend, but he'd better not ask me to do up a parcel. <laughs> True, isn't it? You know, some little annoying thing, and we'd give our life for him. Your friend is the man who knows all about you and still likes you. It takes a long time to grow an old friend. A real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. Someone said, true friendship is like sound health. The value of it is seldom known until it be lost. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of things we could, we could say about friendship, but uh, it's, it needs to be truthful. We need to be helpful. Uh, sometimes we'll be annoying. Verse 17, this is a great verse about friendship. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. 
A real, a, a good friendship should make you better, not worse. Young people, if, if people who say they're your friends try to get you to do something wrong, that's not real friendship. See, iron sharpeneth iron means it makes you better. Real friendship makes you better. And, and if you're a friend of those people who are, who are trying to get you to do wrong, you'll try to get them not to do it. That's a real friend. A good friend will make us better. Verse 19, I, I love this verse. As in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. It's just saying, we need each other. You know, just like looking in the, in the water and seeing your reflection, when you look at others, you, you get things that you need. You know, we need others. God didn't make us just to be an island, just to be alone. God made us to have friendships, to be friendly, and uh, to be, to be uh, uh, in fellowship with others. Hebrews chapter 10, we, it applies mainly to a church, but it applies to friendship as well. Hebrews 10, 24, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. If you're going to provoke somebody, provoke them to love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. You know, when you apply that to friendship, it's easy to walk away. But we need to, to be persistent. A good friend will make us, make us better. Hebrews 3.13, he says, Exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. If you see a friend and they're, they're getting into something that's going to hurt them, be a friend to them. Well then, just a couple of things before we quit. How to avoid bad friendships. I, I can almost guarantee if you'll follow these four steps, uh, people who, who wouldn't be good friends will choose not to be your friend. <laughs> Number one, be willing to have the right enemies. The problem many times is we just want people to like us or we want to be popular. And we need to just make that decision that it's more important to be popular with God than to be popular with people. Now, now don't use this as an excuse for your bad behavior or your bad personality, but uh, we need to be willing to have the right enemies. Not everybody's going to like you when you stand with Jesus. It's just the way it is. Uh, Exodus 32, 26, uh, Moses said to, to Israel, Who is on the Lord's side? Joshua said, choose you this day. It's just a choice. So you have to, number one, be willing to have the right enemies. Number two, verbally identify with Jesus Christ. That means in your speech, in words, just identify yourself with Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. That's my church. That's my pastor. Whatever. <laughs> uh, thirdly, Refuse to do anything that would dishonor God. And we read Psalm 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, Psalm 1.2 talks about, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And we need to, de to delight in the Lord. We don't want to, we shouldn't want to do things that would dishonor God. Um, you, you can probably think of some, some examples where someone might say, oh, we'll just do this once, but it's going to dishonor the Lord. Or, uh, you know, they're going to be involved. There, there's things in the world that are just really common and acceptable, accepted that are not right, but not Christian. And as Christians, we need to be careful. We're not just doing something to make somebody happy. This is not a, a great example, but when we were traveling in the States one time ex for an extended time, one of the problems when you travel as a preacher is everybody wants to feed you. You know, I could be as big as a barn if I wanted to be. I'm a, you know, I love to eat. And I just made a choice. I wasn't going to eat to be polite. <laughs> you ever thought about how many times you eat to be polite? You know, somebody's fixed. They've worked real hard and blah, blah, blah. I just said, I'm not going to eat to be polite. That sounds terrible, doesn't it, putting words. But it really helped me. I could say no easy. <laughs> uh, anyway, and that's, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about here. You know, sometimes we do things or we're, we're just kind of, we don't resist it as much as we should because we don't want to hurt the feelings of that person. Well, listen, sometimes that's a person you're never going to see again in your life. Young people, some of the people that are your friends now, when you're my age, you won't even know where they live. 
They might be dead. I mean, who knows? You just can't do things to make people happy. You need to make the Lord happy. Refuse to do anything that would dishonor God. And then fourthly, include them in things that please God. At least offer. Boy, I tell you, this will this will separate the wheat from the chaff. Oh, hey, we're going to church now. You want to come with us? Listen, don't stay home to suit your friends. When it's time for church, say, time for church. I, I probably told you this many times, but my dad always tells the story of when he was a, a boy. Um, they had some relatives come to stay, and Sunday morning came around, and, and the, the other family wasn't getting ready for church. And he said his dad said, we're, we're going to church today. They, they said, oh, we're, gonna, we're just going to stay home. He said, it got real quiet. So then his dad said, well, at our house, people staying at our house go to church. That's all he said. They got ready and they went to church. With him. I don't know what, what had happened if they hadn't, but anyway. Um, and I'm not saying you have to, have to do it that way, but we need to be careful that, that we just try to include them in, in normal things for the Christian life. If you're going to pray, say, listen, we're going to pray. Would you like to join us? And give them the option of not. Uh, we're going door knocking today. Oh, maybe you better not bring them door knocking. I'm not sure. <laughs> that, that'd be exciting. I t one, I'm getting chasing rabbits here a little bit. But I had one guy. He only ever went door knocking with me once. And that day we door knocked uh, a Satan worshiper who also happened to be one of the guards at the local shopping center, which kind of spooked me out. But anyway, uh, and he started chanting at us and cursing us. And uh, so I, I started chanting and blessing him. But anyway, uh, that was the last guy, the first time that I, a guy ever went door knocking with me. It was the last time. <laughs> he couldn't handle it. But anyway, it's, life is exciting. Um, four things, very simple things. Um, be willing to have the right enemies. Verbally identify with Jesus Christ. Refuse to do anything that would dishonor the Lord and include them in things that, that please God. What about loneliness is the last question there. Well, the well-known verse is, a man, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Loneliness is a product of two things. One, you've not learned to be alone with the Lord. And number two, you're not viewing your life as a ministry. Uh, there's lots of people who need your friendship and would benefit from it. And if... Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you'll be friendly to people, it'll begin to, to, to reap a harvest. And let me encourage you, if you suffer from loneliness, uh, God has a cure for that. And it starts with you. It starts with you being like Jesus. Any comments or questions before we quit tonight? I went a little longer than I expected. but.